Welcome. My name is Sylvia Mrozowska. I'm political scientist from the Faculty of Social Sciences and the director of the Center for Sustainable Development of the University of Gdańsk, Poland. I have lived at the seaside all my life. On the basis of many years of observation as an inhabitant of coastal towns, I have noticed that all aspects of interdependence with the sea, apart from determining the maritime total value, also result in the differentiation of opportunities and interest resulting from different participation in it, dividing people into indifferent and committed. The social aspects of maritime special plan thus appears to be extremely complex. My name is Sylvia Mrozowska. I am political scientist from University of Gdańsk, Poland. I am director of Center for Sustainable Development of the University of Gdańsk. I'd like to tell you about social aspects of maritime special plan. In the perspective of social sciences, the sea space has an enormously broad meaning. Different problems related thereto are attempt to be resolved by economists, political scientists, lawyers, geographers, psychologists or sociologists. During today's lecture, I would like to draw your attention to several important issues explaining why the issue of maritime special planning is so ambiguously perceived by society. I would like to present following issue. Stakeholder involvement in the second part, social conflicts in the process of MSP creation and implementation, and finally, risk perception. One of the significant issues is understanding of social cultural dimension of MSP. What is social cultural dimension of MSP? When we think about it, we mean primarily intangible benefits, the possibility to use the sea, people of the sea, attitudes and perception, well-being, cultural heritage, seascapes, human activity or social values. In order to understand the social perspective of maritime special plans, the account should be taken on numerous factors, including people's attachment to the sea, their perception and emotions related to the sea, social sensitivity to environmental changes, including the nature of the area they have lived in for generations. In the literature, many human activities related to the sea have been distinguished. In this slide, you can see many different ways of the using marine area by man. For example, commercial fishing, offshore agriculture, recreational fishing, marine transportation, industrial production, offshore oil and gas markets development, cables, pipelines, transmission lines, sand and gravel mining, wind farms, offshore renewable energy, military operations, scientific research, culture and historic conservation, and many others. Emma McKinley, Tim Aycott and Tim Stojanowicz provided an overview of the concepts and ideas that fall within term of social culture. They have following conclusion from overview. Firstly, within current MSP processes, there is a lack of understanding of sociocultural components of marine management. Secondly, sociocultural aspects of societal relationship with the sea are subject to special and temporal variation, as well as having the unique issue of being a landscape environment that is often quite removed from everyday public experience. Thirdly, a layer of complexity is added through a domination of studies that explore and or measure social cultural metrics as at a local or regional level. Scaling this up to a national level is challenging and there has been limited success to date. Finally, MSP has an opportunity to lead the way in developing 
a standardized approach to this evidence need, supporting the realization of global goals of a broader, more holistic approach to marine planning. One of the topics within social cultural dimension of MSP is well-being. Well-being is a multidimensional concept in the social sciences, which refers to happy, healthy, prosperous people or communities. Some have argued that current governance overemphasizes economic prosperity and well-being is a counterbalance for planning systems to consider the broader contributions to people's quality of life. In response to this, growing interest a range of disciplines have begun to research well-being in relation to different issues. Authors of chapter entitled Social Cultural Dimension of Marine Special Planning, which is part of the book Maritime Special Planning Past, Present, Future, identified many different topics, focuses in well-being in maritime special planning. In environmental psychology and medicine, there has been a particular focus on blue space to reflect the importance of water-based environments and the health benefits which people get from engaging with coastal or ocean outdoor spaces. For example, research show that visits to coastal locations produce higher psychological restoration benefits than urban green spaces. Research in environmental economics also considers the premium that people are willing to put on interactions with blue space, such as a home with a sea view. However, the economic concept of welfare is narrower than well-being, which extends beyond financial or material benefits on the health of an economy. In cultural geography, anthropology and sociology, there have been investigation of the relationship between affect, emotion and place in marine and coastal settings. For example, researchers consider how the collective identity of coastal communities draws upon fishers engagement with ocean places, particularly emotional attachment to places in the sea and a sense of freedom. In political economy, development studies and sustainability science, there is considerable research exploring the links between the quality of the environment, access to resources and well-being in terms of overall quality of life. Well-being is a key term in a number of frameworks. One reason that people have argued for the use of well-being is planning it is ability to connect political narratives with people's everyday life, in contrast with more monodimensional measures such as gross domestic product or other sustainability indicators. From a well-being perspective, the literature presents a range of findings about the connections between well-being and blue space. A marine plan truly based around achieving well-being outcomes might lead to a different set of priorities. Evidence from studies discussed may support policies such as improved coastal access, but there are trade-offs between this and conservation objectives. Considering how well-being arises in an offshore space and occurs to different land-based populations or interest groups is complicated for marine planning to consider. Marine plans themselves are not always the appropriate regulatory framework for well-being policy. These policy interventions might be developed in other fields such as public health care. Nevertheless, plan policies could encourage development which support this kind of outcome. Well-being therefore represents a measurable outcome for marine planning system and plans. However, how authors of research underlying to date, few national marine planning systems have engaged with this topic extensively or set up an established metric to evaluate this outcome. In conclusion of overview, Emma McKinley, Tim Aycott and Tim Stojanowicz underlying that MSP is still a relatively new mechanism with broader marine and coastal management. The emerging and evolutionary nature of this process suggests there to be scope for the MSP process to evolve and to establish mechanism for the inclusion of the sociocultural aspects of 
societal relationship with the global seas. In summary, it is clear that despite international goals and ever-growing emphasis of the importance of considering the human element of interactions within environmental governance, a lack of understanding about the flows and pathways to impact between this social-cultural dimension and MSP remains. Generally speaking, social sciences perspectives is relevant for MSP because stakeholders are people who have a connection to the sea and to the areas they live in, develop perceptions and feel emotions about developments in their area, are sensitive to changes in their environment, are sensitive to lack of transparency and process perceived as unjust and unfair. Maritime special planning as institutional process can be neutral to society and takes into consideration the valuing of cost and benefits, beliefs, ethics, attitudes, perception and problem frame. Stakeholder involvement is in the spotlight of social aspects of MSP. UNESCO's step-by-step -step approach for marine special planning toward ecosystem-based management offers a 10-step guide on how to get a marine special plan. Stakeholder involvement is the fourth step in this process. The first is establishing authority. Second, obtaining financial support. Next, organizing the MSP process and engaging stakeholders, analyzing existing conditions, analyzing future conditions, developing the plan, implementing the plan, evaluating performance, and finally adapting the process. Experts of maritime special planning underlying that stakeholders' involvement in MSP is one of the most complicated issues, and it is impossible to find easy solutions. The most popular definition of stakeholders is individuals or groups or organizations that are or will be affected, involved or interested, positively or negatively, by the MSP measures or actions in various ways. We can look at the issue of stakeholders' inclusion from the perspective of social participation and the methods of influencing the final decisions by its participants. Einstein's classic ladder of participation starts with providing information through consultation, inclusion of target groups, partnership, interest representation, delegation of decision-making power, and ends with social control and self-organization. Another proposal, the by the man's and female's participation ladder, covers a few stages of involvement, the right to know, informing the public, the right to object, restricted participation, public participation in defining interests and actors, public participation in assessing risk and recommending solutions, public participation in final decisions. Those stages are the parts of the same process. Thus, in many cases, the commencement of the next stage depends on the completion of the previous one. The authors of the participation letter emphasize the interdependence between the engagement degree and the access to information. The increase in engagement may follow an increase in information and civil rights. Moreover, they consider that it is neither reasonable nor necessary to engage all stakeholders at all stages of the participation process. At each participation level, different participatory methods can be distinguished. Information may be transmitted by means of announcements in official journals, public presentations of projects or plan, public exhibitions, brochures, newsletters, notice and press conferences, by means of local radio and television, websites, internet portals, exhibitions or happenings. The consultations cover not only service or site observations and questionnaire interviews with residents, but also mappings, roundtables, 
discussion meetings at offices, phone calls and personal meetings, online voting, civic forum. Co-decision includes workshop methods, working groups, community planning meetings, round tables, online voting. Partial delegation of a decision-making power is carried out through social advisory teams, social vision-making teams or referendum, which is also a method of civic control. In addition, the participatory methods include social panels, conferences of the future, World Cafe and others. Majority of MSP projects carry out research on the mapping of stakeholders. But the important question is, why should stakeholders be involved? Firstly, to encourage ownership of the special plan and gender trust among stakeholders and decision makers and encourage voluntary compliance with rules and regulations. Secondly, to gain a better understanding of the complexity, special, temporal and other of the marine management area. Moreover, to gain a better understanding of the human influences, to deepen mutual and shared understanding about the problems and challenges, to gain a better understanding of underlying often sector-oriented desires, perceptions and interests that simulate and or prohibit integration of policies, to examine existing and potential compatibility or conflicts of multiple use objectives, to generate new options and solutions they may not have been considered individually, and finally, to expand and diversify the capacity of the planning team. Another question is, who should be involved. Within the project Balti plan, mapping of stakeholders has been carried out. Authors identified different groups of stakeholders. The first, stakeholders usually formally involved in the process, representatives from ministries and other public authorities. The second group, stakeholders linked to commercial and non-commercial activities in and around the project area. And last, stakeholders which contribute to the public or to the scientific debate on all governance level regarding the use of the marine special and coastal space. This slide gives an overview of different stakeholders group. There are some ways like horizontal and vertical way of how to involve stakeholders. However, the best seems to empower stakeholders raising the awareness of the possibility of participating in MSP efforts, workshops for local communities, training sessions for certain stakeholder groups, education initiatives to develop and improve much needed negotiation skills, and financial support for professional negotiators. Effective stakeholder involvement can result in improved decision, legitimize the process or decision, increase the capacity of all parties for future understanding deliberation and discussions, particularly in very technical or science-based actions. Relevant tools and techniques to facilitate the involvement process can vary according to the situation, time, skills and resources. For example, advisory group, field trip, hotline, internet, interview, ledge group, small group meeting, open house, pool or survey, public hearing, public meeting, referendum, town meeting, workshop. Very useful are results and recommendations from different MSP projects. For example, the Baltic Line project, whose the overall objective was to increase transnational coherence of shipping roads and energy corridors in maritime special plans in the Baltic Sea region, provided following recommendations. First, for successful involvement of sector representatives, a detailed sectoral communication and cooperation framework should be developed, in which the objectives and results to be achieved and defined. The second, in the involvement process, the planned time period, clear and understandable language and a flexible communication approach are of great importance, so that everyone involved 
both sector representatives, shipping and energy, and experts engage in involvement links. And finally, the involvement process consists of formal and informal communication, both of which are equally important. Another important factor is social conflicts in process of creating and implementation of MSP. The literature lists various situations among the reasons for social conflicts. According to more social conflicts, may be caused by first, values, life philosophy, religion, tradition, ideology, the second, information, no data, incomplete, false data, different points of view, next, interpersonal relationship and emotions, for example, stereotypes and manipulations, and structures like division of roles and responsibilities, poor control of resources. Next, interest, substantive, money, goods, time, psychological, trust, respect, justice, dignity, procedural, procedural regulations, the ways of acting. Social conflicts relate to any dispute over the possibility of using coastal and marine areas where the party is, a local community, tourists, a local authority, a social organization, economic operators, an investor, a professional group, for example, fishermen, port workers, hoteliers, catering workers, or experts. Social resistance to unacceptable investment by the local community is described in the literature as the NIMBY syndrome, not in my backyard. In Poland, also known as not in my garden. The NIMBY syndrome occurs when a conflict breaks out during the investment process between the common good and the good of the local community. This involves the respective individual's attempt to obtain benefits related to using a given good while passing off the cost of providing thereof to other residents. Lesbirel explains that if members of the local community protest, they feel aggrieved against other social groups. Such a protest may have different objectives to demand from the whole society and the investor sharing the benefits with it, for example, the paying compensation or reducing the cost in general, for example, by modifying the project. Research has shown that uh, many energy investment projects accounted opposition from local communities and the situation where authorities and investors neglect the problem of obtaining public acceptance for the investment results in escalating the social protest, such as the protest in Port Talbot, Wales, against building biocombustion plant in Dublin, Ireland, in Poland, in Żuravlów against shell gas drilling, and in Gonski against nuclear power plant location plants. Among the identified factors contributing to arising local conflicts and protests, there are, among others, the imposition of investment in a given locality from the outside, unfamiliarity with technology, ignoring the concern of the local population and not including thereof in the decision-making process. The fact that the investment does not bring local benefits or the application of the accomplished facts policy. A meta-study of social conflicts has indicated that public acceptance is greater for projects that are locally rooted, provide local benefits, create continuity with existing physical, social and cognitive structures, and which apply good communication and participatory procedures. One kind of social conflicts is ecological conflict. The concept of sustainable development, eco-development, sustained development, that has been applicable since the 1990s, presupposes principles and limitations in the economic use of the natural environment, requiring its protection while ensuring the restoration of the usefulness and quality of the environmental natural resources in long term. Conflicted expectations and interests of economic operators, social groups, local communities, 
governments and citizens of certain countries or residents of different regions of the world lead to social conflicts related to the environmental, ecological conflicts. Ecological conflicts mean a rising of antagonistic relations following the existence of an actual or potential conflict of interests and priorities for the formation use and protection of the natural environment. These conflicts are based on unlimited expectations of societies with regard to the consumption of tangible and intangible goods, including non-productive environmental goods, combined with the rarity of resources to satisfy them. As a result, cooperation in the form of collective actions, that is to say, establishing interest groups constituting a coalition of individuals acting to achieve the common good may take place. Social research carried out under the project Models of Social Conflicts at Natura 2000 Protected Sites in Poland has confirmed a widespread opinion on Natura 2000 sites as conflict-generating areas. The authors of the study have demonstrated that social conflicts are an important barrier to the effective management of protected areas and to the economic and social development of municipalities located in those areas. The main reasons for social conflicts at Natura 2000 sites are of the planning, errors in areas planning, collision of strategy documents, investment, infrastructural and environmental character. Common reasons for conflicts are also the need to limit certain economic functions or incompatibility of economic functions that have been carried out so far within respective Natura 2000 sites. The intensity of the course of those conflicts is additionally reinforced by factors such as non-inclusion of communities and local authorities at the initial stage establishing Natura 2000 sites in Poland. Lack of knowledge about the functioning rules of Natura 2000 sites among residents and employers at the low competence level represented by the protected site administration, as well as local authorities in the dialogue with inhabitants. In addition, the authors have revealed that the main interests of the parties engaged in conflict are the first lost benefits due to the restriction in running business in those sites, willingness to implement investments whose objectives interfere with the objectives of the environmental protection, and finally, desire to maintain their current use. It is worth nothing that, in the opinions, the positive impact of Natura 2000 sites on the personal situation of respondents has been often referred to, which can be linked both to material benefits, running business, participation in agriculture, environmental programs, as well as intangible ones, attractive landscape, clean environment, conflicts and compatibility between maritime sectors were the subject of research of the WWF program for the Baltic ecoregion. The authors of the report pointed out that many of the maritime sectors could not coexist in the same area. You can see it in the table. In some cases, this is due to the area occupied, as in the case of wind farms and oil wells, which limit other activities. Some sectors may not use the same area due to the mutual negative impact, as in the case of industrial pollution impact on fish farms. Some activities may conflict with others. One of the examples is the oil and gas exploration. Sand and gravel mining may have a negative impact on other sectors of operation. For example, marine protected areas or may not be carried out within the limits of other permanent infrastructure, such for example, wind farms and other activities such as shipping. Marine protected areas and military areas can potentially exclude other sectors of the marine 
area uses, since the essence of establishing thereof is to protect the area from certain human activities. Pollution from agriculture and industry does not physically exploit marine area and as such has not been included in the table. Although pollution has a limited impact on operation of sectors such as shipping, ports, power supply cables and pipelines, it is a survey impact on many other sectors, in particular fisheries, agriculture, tourism and recreation, as well as environmental protection. However, many sectors may coexist with other sectors, provided that adequate planning and management are introduced. More integrated planning and management will help resolve many conflicts and identify many synergies. Bottom traveling must not be carried out within the area of pipelines and cables, but fishing with other tools may be carried out without interaction. Another social aspect of MSP is risk perception. The sociological approach to risk coincides with the position of social constructivism and its assumption that human cognition and perception are influenced not only by what one knows and understands, namely reality in general, but also by culture and meaning. Complex patterns of risk interpretation in the public sphere are presented by an interdisciplinary concept of social amplification by Kaspersons. The SARF concept provides that the social and political interpretation of risk is in fact a communication process where social actors and institutions play a major role. In the course thereof, the risk is decoded with the participation of values and symbolic models of interpretation. The second area of human functioning, which is related to the level of perceived risk and to attitudes toward science and technology, covers the values on which people base their decisions and shape their perception of the social world. The values appreciated by people, for example, universalism, tradition, power, materialistic values, self-development, point out to those areas of life that are most valued by individuals. They can be described as broadly defined line goals whose function is to guide the choices we make in life, our attitudes, our behaviors, one of the broadly accepted concepts for value sharing is the Schwartz theory of value structure. He has proposed the model of the 10 main values. The Schwartz value structure is organized around the bipolar dimension. The poles of one dimension are, on the one hand, open to change, pursuing simulation and novelties, hedonist values. On the other hand, conservation values tradition, security, conformity. The second dimension is described by the transcendence fall, self-transcending one's egoistic interests. For example, paying attention to the value of nature or caring for the well-being of other people. And the pole of values aimed at the self-development, power, achievement. That value model has been confirmed in many studies conducted in diverse culture areas all over the world. In the context of the risk and hazard perception, values have been proved to be important predictors of the different level associated with different technologies. For example, previous studies have revealed that values that emphasize the role of tradition, social conformism, and the sense of security were associated with concerns about various social and natural phenomena. In other studies, people who showed high levels of conservative values were more concerned about being infected during the pandemic. The third variable that can influence attitudes towards science and implementation of new technologies is the intensity of attachment to the local community to their own social group. Strong group identification in many studies has proven to be a predictor 
of acting in the interest of the local community. Psychological and sociological studies have also revealed that a strongly developed group identity is a predictor of readiness to act in the interests of the own group's members. For example, the more farmers identified themselves with the farming community, the more they became involved in protest of agriculture organizations. This mechanism is also reflected in other social identities, such as identification with trade unions or gender identification, which proved to be an important determinant of engagement in social and political actions in the context of equal rights between men and women. Thus, the power of the connection with the local community may be a predictor of engaging in protest against technologies that seem to threaten the group or in efforts to improve the group's material status and lobbying for technologies that appear to benefit the local community. Another important variable in that context is the sense of both personal and group control. The sense of the surrounding control and influence is a very important human need and its satisfaction has been rapidly linked to overall better mental functioning. A greater sense of control correlates, for example, with the perceived lower risk associated with the failure of nuclear power plant. These people who show a lower level of satisfaction with the sense of control of their safety are more anxiety about that. A sense of group control, on the other hand, is associated with a tendency to engage in behavior that protects the group and brings tangible benefits to it. Therefore, a sense of impact of the local community may be associated with a greater tendency of show positive attitudes towards technologies if they bring benefits to the community. The role of emotions is shaping attitudes towards technology should be also analyzed. Research into so-called motivated reasoning, such reasoning may be a form of internal regulation of emotions in which the processing of information coming from the world leads to such an interpretation thereof that serves to reduce negative emotions or to increase positive ones. The result thereof is the psychological mechanism in which we usually seek confirmation of our beliefs and we ignore or omit in our deliberation information contrary to them. In the context of the reception of science and technology, many studies have revealed that people tend to see mainly positive aspects of things, phenomena or technologies that they like and mainly negative characteristic of phenomena they dislike. To sum up that presentation, I would like to underline that to better understanding of social aspects of MSP, it's important to find links between the three issues of risk perception, conflict resolution and stakeholder involvement. The ability to deal with conflicts of use constructively and effectively is a key requirement for successful maritime special planning. As a forward-looking and strategic process of managing human activities in the marine environment, MSP must address conflicts in a proactive and ideally preemptive way, avoiding blockages in the MSP process and fostering coexistence and synergies between different marine users. Finding acceptable solutions to special conflicts is therefore an essential part of the MSP process. The conflict stories and experiences reported by MSP planners given some useful insights into typical escalating factors. The European MSP platform under the assistance mechanism for the implementation of maritime special planning published report presents the key findings of a study that was carried out in 2080 to explore the range of special conflicts experiences in MSP in Europe. The aim was to provide an overview of common types of special conflicts and solutions 
that have been found in various European Union member states, which particular focus on special conflict prevention and mitigation. There were following vectors. First, political priorities. Second, stakeholder perceptions and lack of understanding. Third, in transparency of a decision-making process. Next, media exposure and lack of knowledge, lack of resources, time and clear responsibilities. And finally, lack of acceptance of a proposed solution. On the first place are political priorities. Despite the best of intentions, MSP may be powerless to address a pre-existing issue, such as existing licenses or change a political priority. The fact that defense has a higher political priority than offshore wind farming, for example, may need to be accepted as a given. This makes it all the more important to find appropriate mitigation solutions, ideally together with the stakeholders concerned. The second issue is stakeholder perceptions and lack of understanding of conflicting issues, but also of each other. Lack of understanding of how and sector works can impede a constructive discussion. It can also prevent solutions from being found if mutual needs and the reasons for those needs are not made clear. Moreover, in transparency of a decision-making process. Providing stakeholders with incomplete information is risky, as this might lead to questions or suspicious. In worst case scenarios, the process can become derailed or at least delayed because of a breakdown in trust. Special constraints can restrict special management options, such as relocation. If a conflict cannot be resolved, by means of special relocation, mitigation options need to be explored, which may lead to a longer process and difficulties for one or both of the sectors concerned. Media exposure can help to bring a conflict to the table, but can also escalate a conflict that might have found a solution otherwise. Use of the media for political gain can also escalate conflicts. Lack of knowledge or contested knowledge on the impacts of activities can be a significant escalating factor, in particular where environmental impacts are concerned. Lack of resources, time and clear responsibilities act as general constraints for MSP processes and can also contribute to conflict escalation, for example, if there is insufficient stakeholder consultation or engagement early on in the process. Lack of acceptance of a proposed solution is another problem. Some conflicts escalate because a small group of stakeholders is unwilling to accept the solution. As you can see, the social aspects of maritime special planning appears to be extremely complex. I would like to thank you all for your attention during the webinar. Okay.